Here we'll be taking a slightly deeper look at certain aspects of standing waves or stationary waves. We'll be having a look at how they behave when they're on strings and when we form uh, acoustic standing waves in tubes with open or closed ends. Uh, and in doing so we'll also be able to introduce a couple of terms describing the fundamental mode of a standing wave and the higher harmonics of a standing wave. So we'll start by just uh, briefly having a look again at what a standing wave is. So here we've got an illustration that we've looked at before. So we've got a blue wave traveling to the right, we've got the red wave traveling towards the left, uh, but of course these superimpose and we don't actually see the individual waves. What we see is the superposition of the two which forms this black wave and we can see that because we've got an equal amount of energy traveling to the left in the red wave and to the right in the blue wave uh, we have no net transfer of energy and so we get this standing wave pattern formed of these nodes at the red dots and the anti-nodes uh, halfway between each where we've got this maximum displacements. Uh, so here we've got, we can see we've got this pattern of uh, a node, uh, anti-node, node, anti-node, anti so on and so forth. Um, and we can see this in this diagram I've got here. So here we're imagining we've got a length of uh, string or a length of wire or a length of rope and we've formed a standing wave on it. So we've got this length coming across here. Um, and we can, we've got a series of what we can refer to as modes. And this top one is called the fundamental one, uh, the fundamental mode. So in these standing wave patterns, we get series of nodes and anti-nodes. So over here, at each end of the string, because it's fixed, we've got, we must have no displacement at each end. So each end of a fixed string must have no displacement and therefore is a node. Um, and so the simplest way, we can't just have two nodes together because that would be no vibration at all. So the simplest structure is to have the two nodes at one at each end and an anti-node dead in the center. So that gives us this simple shape um, which is called our fundamental. So the lowest frequency that we can have here, the lowest shape, the simplest shape, is called the fundamental mode. Um, and we could work out what the frequency is of this wave that we've set up here. So we've got this length of the string here, and the distance between two adjacent nodes is a half of a wavelength. So this length, in this case, is equal to a half of the wavelength. So if we knew the speed of uh, the wave in this string, then we could use this to work out the wavelength if we knew the length of string, and that would give us the frequency that we would have to use. Uh, but we can get higher patterns. If we increase the frequency, we can get this second pattern here, where now instead of just a node at each end and a single anti-node, we've got a node at each end, a node in the center, and this pair of antinodes. So we can see that we've got node, antinode, node, and then another antinode, node. So we've added a node, antinode pair. So this is uh, one of the harmonics of this fundamental. So this fundamental mode can also be referred to as the first harmonic. This would be the second harmonic. This would be the third harmonic, so on and so forth. So each time we go to a higher harmonic, we add another node-antinode pair. So here we've got, there's node-antinode, node-antinode, and then a node. Here, in the third harmonic, we've got node-antinode, node, antinode, node, antinode, node. So we've again added another node-antinode pair. So here's a node-antinode pair, here's a node-antinode pair, and there's the original node-antinode node that we saw in the first harmonic, the fundamental harmonic. Uh, and we can again work out what the frequency would be of each of these. So here, between a pair of nodes, is a half wavelength. So here, in the second harmonic, we've actually got a full wavelength. And so that's going to be twice the frequency. In the third harmonic, 
we've got one and a half wavelengths compared to the original half wavelength. So that's three halves of a wavelength. And so this will be three times the frequency. So the frequency required to form the fundamental mode we can describe as F naught. And then the frequency required for the second harmonic will be 2F naught. For the third harmonic will be 3F naught. For the fourth harmonic will be 4F naught, so on and so forth. And so each time we go to a higher harmonic, when we've got a node at each end of a string, we go for another multiple of the frequency. Um, so strings are the sort of thing that we might get in, say, a guitar or a string instrument. Um, but we can also form standing waves in other instruments, such as wind instruments. Um, and in these, we tend to get tubes, and uh, we'll have a look at what happens where we've got a tube. So if we imagine having a tube, within that tube, we've got some air. So if we've got a closed tube, so we're closed at both ends, that at each end of the tube, we can't have any displacement in the air. So each end of the tube must be a node. So we must, for the simplest mode, for the fundamental mode, for the first harmonic, we must have another antinode in here. And so we will again get this sort of shape that we had on our previous slide for the first harmonic of the string. Of course, much smoother, lovely sinusoidal kind of shape. Um, and higher harmonics will be multiples of this frequency. Um, but sometimes the tubes have one open end and one closed end. So what we get if we do that, if we sketch out another tube, this time with one end open, so a half open tube, we're still going to have a node at this end. But this end, because it's open, that's going to create an anti-node. So that's because it's nice and open, it can be maximum displacement. So if we were to sketch a similar shape to represent the shape of the wave, what we'd actually get is because we've got a node and then an anti-node over here, we don't have adjacent nodes, so this is it. This is basically the shape. And so we get something that looks a little bit like that. And so we can see now that this is only lambda over 4. This is only a quarter of the wavelength, and so the frequency is going to be much lower than if we had a closed end by a factor of 2, in fact. And then the higher harmonics are going to look slightly different. So for the next harmonic, we're going to have a node, we're going to have an antinode over here still, and we're going to again introduce a node-antinode pair. So here's an antinode, there's a node. And so the shape of this harmonic is going to look something like this. So we've got a node here, we've got an antinode there, back to a node, and then an antinode. Node, antinode, back to a node, and then to an antinode. And we can see this has got three quarters of the uh, wavelength in it. The next one will have five quarters. And so what we get is that if this is the fundamental frequency, this is going to be three times the fundamental frequency. The third harmonic, so the next one along, is going to be five times the fundamental frequency. So because we've got this different shape, we get a different pattern of nodes and antinodes, and so rather than being uh, every multiple of the frequency, so in this case we would have F0, 2F0, 3F0, 4F0, so on and so forth. Here we just get the odd multiples, so 1F0, 3F0, 5F0, 7F0 for the next harmonic, so on and so forth. Um, and so this is the sort of patterns that we can form from standing waves on strings and in tubes that are either closed uh, or half open. If we're completely open, um, then we get something similar again. So if we've got an open tube, uh, then what we're going to get is very similar to the string, but the nodes and antinodes are going to be flipped. So we'll have an antinode here, an antinode at the other end, and so we've got a node here. And so we get this sort of shape here which is again a half a wavelength, and so we get the same pattern of the frequencies as we do for a fully closed tube or for a string. And so by being able to recognize and predict these patterns that form, uh, we can predict the frequencies that we're going to be able to set up on a string. And so what happens when we pluck a string on a typical string instrument is we primarily get the fundamental mode, so this one at the top. 
but then what we also get is small amounts of these higher harmonics to various degrees and so that's what gives uh, a musical instrument the depth to its sound so we get the fundamental mode but then working on top of the fundamental mode on top of the first harmonic we have the additional harmonics going to a, a, a small degree and that gives us that additional depth to the sound rather than just getting a single pure sine wave which sounds quite shallow.